folks, and welcome to Subjective Thoughts. And our comic for today is Nightclub, Issue 2 by Image. Now there is a bit of violence, blood, biting, and vampire shit in this one. So if you are in any way squeamish, you have been warned. Oh so, spoilers. Alright, here's the team. I'm not sure if it's all the same people from the first issue, maybe. I really don't bloody remember. Because it's been about, what, nine months, something like that, since I've read the first issue. Yeah, as, as always, I, I have a mess. It took me a while to find this, even. Anyway, I found it, and now I finally read it. And I do mostly remember what happened in the first issue. Right, so when we uh, left off in issue one, uh, Danny called his friends, Sam and Amy, to, uh, to... Yeah, he called them, and they said wait, and then suddenly poof, he appeared. Yeah, I remember he appeared in front of them in a mask, and that's where the uh, issue left off. So, here we start when they see him, and they, uh, ran away screaming from him. Makes sense if he, in fact, just poofed out of nowhere. Not very smart on his part, but... D Daddy's not the cleverest boy out there. So, yes, they, they run away from him, he goes after them, um, but, uh, oh, Sam almost gets hit by a truck, but, uh, Danny saves him, and he... Teleports him around several places until they get to a roof. He's still somewhat scared, and Daddy's like, "It's it's me, Sam." And Sam's like, "Danny." And then he, he looks ahead and he sees uh, Amy running uh, ten blocks. Uh, he sees her from the from ten uh, from ten blocks away. He sees her still running, and he's like, "Maybe I should give her a call." And I get it; these are teenagers, but I mean. Dude, just, you should have just called them to begin with and asked them to come over and see you. Anyway, in, we get on to them being in that apartment where Danny was turned into a vampire and he tells his friends uh, everything that happened about that detective vampire that turned him, about how he hypnotized the hospital staff and his mom. So they all believed that instead of breaking his neck and back, all he got was a couple of scrapes and bruises from his fall. So, then now he's like, I'm not supposed to uh, to tell you. And Sam asks, you're not, are you supposed to tell us all this? And he says, no. Because he tells them about, uh, you know, the detective. And also uh, how he wants to make this team. And he picked Danny to be on his team. And Danny's like, yeah, I'm not supposed to tell you. But and he looks at them. He wants to offer to turn them into vampires as well. Now Sam is like, no, man. But Amy says, yeah, I'm in. I am bored from school. There are no job prospects, so I'm going to turn into a vampire. And so Danny bites her. Uh, three days later, she wakes up, just like Danny did. And, you know, feeling stiff and everything. And she looks at these Sam's also... Lying, he's lying on the floor with a pillow. He also uh, asked Danny to turn him. He didn't want to. He's like, "Ah, oh, you guys are gonna have powers, and I won't." So now all three of them are vampires, and she's like, "Oh, it's gonna, you know, be great for our YouTube channel with all the stunts." Oh my god. Yes, well, now they're vampires. Uh, Danny ordered them wrestling masks as well, like uh, the one he's wearing. You see them here in the, on the cover. So they, then they go out for Danny to show them how to use their vampire abilities. Mighty quickly, might I add. I guess they run around on cars. Uh, he tells Amy to turn into a vampire, though... Not a vampire, a bat. Though she turns into several bats, and then she, um, like all the bats fly to the car Danny's standing on, and then she turns back to herself. How the fuck does that work? Never mind. 
Dad, he tells Sam to do the same. Sam is reluctant again. He's like, oh, I'm not sure I can do it. I still want to be me. But uh, before they can uh, try, uh, continue trying it, they get knocked off the car they're standing on. The cars they're standing on, I should say. And they're like, what's going on? And then um, Amy says, oh, it's because uh, vampires can't uh, go over running water. Because they're on the, on the bridge. Um, maybe they're in San Francisco. I'm not sure what city they're in. But it has the bridge, uh, yeah, so they can't go. And this story seems to combine a lot of the old, um, you know, classical vampire myths, like sunlight and crucifixes and can't go over running water. Every vampire story, they do it differently. People use different rules and shit or come up with their own rules. So yeah, here it's more of the classical stuff. I still don't fucking understand... How can you just go out in the sun but just wear a mask? Like vampires, it doesn't matter. They have to be in, the, in a dark place, even a bit of sunlight getting in there. Fucked. I just don't imagine clothing would protect them that well from it, right? It would still get in. I mean, I, I get it. This is the rules that uh, uh, Mark Miller wrote here. But still, it's like... Okay, so just to be a bit of fabric and they're good. It's, it's not even some kind of, you know, special fabric that was designed to help vampires avoid the sun. It's just probably cheap Amazon masks and clothing. Okay, never mind. So they're standing on the bridge. Um, then uh, Sam checks his phone and he has like 50 messages from the bully guy from the first issue. The one that looks like he stayed back like six classes or something. Because he's a fucking big dude. So he, he's been bullying uh, Sam and he's gonna uh, punish him. Now Sam hasn't been in school in three days. Oh yeah, I forgot to say, when Amy says she wants to turn into a vampire, uh, Daddy's like, well, we'll just cover for her. We'll tell our parents she's we're going on a school trip or something. I'm gonna guess Daddy just keeps hypnotizing his mom. To make her think he's going to school. Because, I mean, he can't go to... He probably won't be able to, you know, wear his masks in, in school. Or ask them to close all the windows so he's sitting in the dark. Uh, right, anyway. Um, so, yeah. It, it, right, so Sam gets this call and he's like, oh, shit, what am I going to do? And then Danny and uh, Amy take their masks off, and Sam looks at them and is like, Oh, right. I'm a vampire now. So they go back to... They go to school. It's already... Yeah, it's already uh, evening. The sun set down. And they all appear. You see the bully guy, his girlfriend, her friends, his posse, or his gang, whatever. They're in the basketball court. And he's like, Hey, we're here. Uh, my friends wanted to, uh, Sam tells him, my friends wanted to show you how they play. So then they both just jump on the, you know, over the really long fence, the really high fence, sorry. And everyone's like, what the fuck? My God, I get it, they're teenagers, but they're so fucking stupid. I mean, this is stuff you should bloody hide. I mean, these, uh, these are teenagers, so they might not be believed if they tell later, oh, we saw them jump this high. But still. I, uh, I did, okay, I'll, I'll get to that later. I'll get to that later. So, obviously, Danny and Amy being vampires, they slaughter them in basketball. They, like, run quickly and shoot the, the ball through the hoop and shit. And everyone's like, holy hell. And then, um, oh, and then the bully guy tells him, well, just because you've, you know, you missed a few days, and just because you're early, I'm not going to go easy on you. He says before, and I'm not going to be soft on you. And then uh, Sam's like, Amy, and she throws him the, the basketball, and he catches it. And then he, he takes it, and he just throws it in the bully's face. Like, right in there. The, the bully guy falls backwards. Is, I imagine his nose might be broken. There's blood on the basketball. And Sam catches it in his hand and says, um, Let's see, what did he say? Just a 
second. Now, what did he say? Um, ah, yeah, you guys are off the team. As he's standing above the bully, spinning the basketball one finger. And around him um, are the girlfriend, her friends, and I think some of his, um, uh, some of the bully's friends. And that's it. That's how uh, the second issue ends. All right, let's start with the cover. Um, cover's cool. I think it's the A cover. And I don't remember. It's been a while. You see there's some damage on the comic. Or it's been in a bag and shit. This is though misleading because there's nowhere in this comic does a guy like that appear. Not once. So, bullshit. And still, a uh, good cover. Good colors. I'll show you the inside art. So there's Amy and Sam. I love how they all have black hair too. There we go. You see these he's running. I mean, they're running away from him. Daddy's like, guys, uh, the art style is, uh, is good. I think, yeah, it's, it's the same like it was. I, I like the style. It's clear enough. It's got nice details. The faces sometimes are a bit, mm, but uh, other than that, it's, uh, it's good. You see, Sam almost gets hit. Danny grabs him, and poof. Oh, yeah, I forgot. A guy almost, uh, the cab driver almost shoots them. Twitchy guy. I hear me too of these two suddenly appeared out of fucking nowhere. You can see uh, he poofs them again into a restaurant. Uh, that's the art. Oh, not bad. Uh, it's not bad. Yeah, this is a good art style. Um, Remember who the artist is even? Ah, uh, jo Joanna, Joanna, or Juana Ramirez. I'm not sure. It's a. I think it's a Spanish name, isn't it? But yeah. All right. So that's the art. Now for the story. So when I quite liked the first issue. I thought this was gonna go uh, cool. I did think though that um, you know it would be more with Danny and that detective guy. I didn't think they would continue with Danny going back to his friends. Now I did assume that Danny would probably tell his friends, you know, teenagers and shit. He probably would tell them about it, but it's just uh, it's. I like, this, this is uh, turning out to be a bit sillier than I thought it would be. And not that I didn't enjoy the read, but I was hoping, you know, for some actual action shit. I also learned today that this turned out to be a six-issue miniseries. I mean, six issues would count as a miniseries, right? Well, I, mean, uh, I guess maybe not exactly. It's a little... Anyway, it's a short series. So I just wonder how the fuck this is going to conclude. And also, how dumb is that detective for just leaving Danny to his own devices? You just turned a reckless teenager who ended up in the hospital due to his own stupidity, attempting a dangerous stunt, breaking his neck and back in the process. You didn't think it would be a good idea to, I don't know, supervise he just fucked off and left him. I mean, I get it. He, he probably has other shit to do, but I don't know. Have someone watch Danny. Look what he did. You left him alone and he turned two of his friends into vampires. Now, they're teenagers and stupid and they don't realize what this fucking means. I mean, Danny doesn't even want to be referred to as a vampire, just having vampire abilities. And they're like, cool, we're going to have powers. Yeah, but you're also immortal, dipshit. What does that mean later on? You realize now all your relatives, your family, they're all going to die while you keep continue to be alive. Now, granted, I don't know how this universe works. Maybe it's like in where if the one that turned them dies and they turn back to humans or something. You know, if the master dies, then the vampires turn back to humans. Now, if they actually stay alive or not afterwards or turn to dust is a different question. But yeah, it's, just, it, it's so stupid to leave a teenager on his own devices like that. And Danny, too, offering this to his friends. Danny didn't even have a choice. The detective guy just went in, turned him, and oh, now you're part of my army, boy. 
And then now what? And now he fucks off and like, what's gonna happen? And what about these three now? Why they get the, okay, they, they got revenge on the bully, uh, Sam, I mean. Now what? What are they gonna do with the rest of their time? I mean, it's gonna be detrimental to the detective guy if they start making YouTube videos and showing vampire abilities and shit. That's just not safe. Like, it's just, it, it's just astounding to me. I mean, I get it, maybe it's part of, you know, it's part of the humor here, maybe, but still. Very irresponsible, to an amazing degree. <sighs> right, yes, I thought, you know, this was gonna go serious, we're gonna see Danny go on a mission with the detective, see some underworld vampires and shit. Nah, we're, we're gonna film YouTube videos. Again, this is just the second issue. I'll see what happens later on the third one. Maybe the third one's gonna go there. I do wonder how angry the detective's gonna be because he turned these two chuckleheads into vampires. Granted, maybe it would be better for him because there's more of an army. But I love how easy it is here. It just fucking turns them and they survive. There's so many vampire stories where they're just... There's no guarantee you will survive the bite even. You might die, and here it's just, ah, oh, you'll be knocked out for three days. Hello, you're a vampire. Ugh, yeah, right. Well, but again, I'll wait and see. This might improve. Like I said, this issue was a fun read. I just, I was hoping it would take a more serious direction. Oh my god, these teenagers are stupid. I kind of wondered the detective later on is going to, you know, regret turning him. It's like, uh, why did I do that? Uh. But, well, that is left to be seen. Other than that, it was a very fun and entertaining issue. I, I, also, I found it funny how they, they have to do the he shows about do vampire stuff, and they're like, ew, that's gross. You didn't think about it before you decided to be bitten? And, like, how's it gonna be with food? I mean, do they have a blood supply now? Does Danny have somewhere to get it? Is he gonna have to bite people? And also, I love how he just had the restraint to just bite them, but not completely kill them. I know, I guess the thing with them being constantly hungry for blood, maybe not a thing here. I guess that's always the common thing, is the thirst that never gets quenched. Because you need more and more blood. I guess in here it's not part of it. Well, yeah, that was the second issue of Nightclub. I uh, don't know if I actually have all of them. I thought today, and I remember I got number four, but I don't remember if I have the last two issues. So if I don't, I'm going to have to get them if I want to finish this one. But yeah, that's a, that's a problem for another day. All right, folks, so that is it. Uh, let me know. Did you read the uh, Nightclub? The first issue and second? Well, what did you think? Did you like the story? Did you not? Did you find it silly? Let me know down below in the comments. And that is it. Now remember, collect what you're passionate about and share it on YouTube. Bye! <laughs>